in the last two years I have been conducting an artistic research in Tornby. Any of you knows Tornby? It's a, <laughs> it's a, a suburb of Copenhagen and the airport is part of Tornby. And um, it was all about hmm, meeting people, creating a space with people there. And I started this research with another question then, or others said, the question transformed. And um, I'm trying out today a format of reflection and um, it's the first time that I'm doing it, so I'm really be just very interested in the response because I try to create a kind of a, a kind of a fiction about that process. So I'm reading now texts, excerpts that, that I have started to write that eventually become a little book, which is maybe in some way a reflection on an artistic research project, but in some way it's also a fiction about an artistic research project. And um, yes, so what you hear is a written text. It's called How to Welcome People. This text is a report about a local international activity in Tornby, a suburb of Copenhagen. The work was framed by ideas about performance, art, theater, public, being a citizen, making sense, wasted time. Research money is paid so that researchers can look out the window. In the day-to-day -day business, they can't look out the window and then they can't do research. This quote by the Freiburg brain researcher and neuropathologist Benedikt Volk Orlovsky, with whom I had collaborated a long time ago for a stage production, was to manifest itself unexpectedly in this work. There was a lot of waiting. I waited because of the political and structural nature of the place where the artistic research happened. Tornby on Ammar near Copenhagen, adjacent to the sea, the airport, the capital. Tornby is a place, is the place where I live. And here, unless you have lived here for years and know all the main and secondary characters performing public life, you enter into a relationship with institutions with a written application, even if you could walk by and discuss. Your requests are dealt with according to guidelines, within set deadlines, one waits for answers and knows exactly in advance how long. I also waited because of the real event, the COVID pandemic, with which I had to wrestle, of course, like everyone else. The decision not to postpone the planned activities, but to work with the given circumstances and thus transform, adapt, reinvent the methods, was a matter of principle. You can postpone anything, but not life. Nobody can choose the social circumstances that happen to me and others. What's the point of postponing? Tomorrow I will be dead. Moreover, the horizon of the pandemic was not foreseeable. Who knew how long the lockdown would last? Who knew what the world would look like afterwards? There was, however, a small problem. The idea of artistic research, for which I had received the generous grant, consisted at its core in contact with people. What did that mean now? Most of the people were forced to sit in their apartments and explicitly avoid contact. Waiting, however, was also a central artistic practice that I had already brought with me. For many years, I had waited on the streets from time to time, inviting passers-by to sit with me. It had proven to be a simple, 
and for me, powerful practice. The people who spoke to me, I could hardly have met in any other way. I wouldn't have found them in newspapers, books, or blogs. So waiting on people was familiar to me, waiting for people. The silence of the public space during the lockdown, however, was, had a different quality. It was the silence of retreat, the silence of death, life withdrew. Private existence became one of pure endurance, reduced to basic biological functions. To wait for people in such a situation in a public space is, first of all, almost a joke. A kind of narrow-minded self-assertion, I exist. But surprise, it was productive in many ways, artistically, socially, even institutionally. To anticipate, here is my experience. By waiting, the event already occurs. Waiting is the event, and it entails, it entails other events. Without waiting, nothing would happen. Everything that came after the waiting was due to the waiting. This is what this report is about. I installed public situation and performances of waiting. Moments which laid the foundation for encounters. Situations that called up the questions, who is here? How does art communicate when the work is just the present of few people, few ideas, few benches? Probably the most artistic thing about artistic research is how to deal with it when waiting but also how to deal with it when something suddenly happens. But still, I'm anticipating, because for the time being, I'm groping in the dark. I'm now introducing a character here who is doing this research. This character is, generally speaking, a cis-hetero man. He lives with his family in Tormbu. He has a Swiss passport, because he was born in Switzerland almost 50 years ago. And five years ago, he moved with his family to Tormbu. Since then, he has been trying to make sense of his life and the circumstances he encounters here. Among other things, he tries to generate this meaning in interaction with the city where he lives. Andreas is his name, and there will be some... And there will be... Yeah, Andreas is his name. Andreas had artistic research in mind, and it was called Imaging the Social. So it was going to be about imaging, the social, about the external image of participative projects, about the effect on art projects. Sorry. It was about the, it was about the external image of participative projects, about the effect an art project achieves by conveying this image to people who were not part of the process. It was on the impact of an art project when it is fed into public discourses as a symbol. It was about the differentiation between the participants' experience of a performance art project and the receivers. It becomes an art project when it inscribes itself via media into the brain systems of people who are not participating. Andreas had taken this argumentation from Claire Bishop, who reflected on the fact that a social art project needs a mediating term, third medium, that carries the project to the outside world. Only now I do I realize that Danish politics consistently works according to these principles. Political decisions are made by which... Political decisions by which people are affected are made. In art, these processes would be called participatory. In the case of the Danish politics, they could rather be called authoritarian. In any case, in these processes, something is done with people and people are involved, and the symbol, the third medium, is what acts outwardly. That's where the art takes place. My artistic research actually taught me otherwise. I'm no longer looking for a third medium, for a mediating image, at least not at any price. For me, the legitimacy of an art project arises in its core directly with the people involved. Here we should talk about Michael, the broker, 
who had hoped to do business by demolishing and rebuilding the local supermarket building. In Germany, one would glossily say Arkaden to such a structure, but Arkad, Arkades, Arcade, was not. The building was a concrete structure in Tornbü, in which the white paint had long since crumbled off, which was closed off with iron bars in the evening, whose gray color was also crumbling off, which housed a bodega, a pet shop, a bookstore, a pharmacy, a drugstore, a supermarket, and actually everything stank of decaying waste that was put out in the evening by all the stores. A secret public space for hungry residents that would search for eatable rubbish. Therefore, the dumpster was not closed in the night. The only thing that was closed was the building, and even during the day, when it was open, it seemed closed. Michael had seriously tried to make money with this building, but he did not count on Tornby. Tornby is more inert than gold. Everything bounces off. Tornby is platinum. Tom took to his heels and was never heard from again. Here we should talk about the mayor. The mayor of Tornby was a nice, approachable social democrat with whom one could talk. He also liked to present on Facebook how he visited schools, the nature reserve, or when the Danish prime minister from the same party had paid her respects to the area. The Danish prime minister had made a name for herself with a xenophobic, with a xenophobic policy inherited from the previous government, by which Andreas felt affected, who had immigrated from the most suitable immigration country seen from Denmark called Switzerland, and he was actually a good foreigner in the eyes of the authorities. Here we should be talking about the head of the local library, who made it clear to Andreas that his work was welcome here, but of course unwanted. Here we should be talking about the head of a local semi-social housing consortium, who said in a meeting, art makes life sweeter. Here we are talking about Marianne. Marianne was the nicest woman in Tornby. She doesn't live here, and she has quit her job. She was employed by the, semi, by the local semi-social housing consortium and was responsible for the welfare of the residents. She takes care of the residents. She stops by and asks how things are going. She takes them for walks, and during Corona, yes, this must also be mentioned, during Corona she came at least once a week in front of each balcony together with a fitness trainer, played loud music, danced, and invited the people that have been locked in their apartments to join in the dancing on the balcony. Many joined in and were enthusiastic. Marianne, you are to be praised. You have ensured that Andreas could do his work, or what he calls work, his artistic research, or his artistic approach, or his life-saving with semi-social housing consortium called Tornby Huse. Here we are talking about Said. Said lives in Tornby Huse. He is Egyptian and was married to a Danish woman he met online. They have four children. Now they are separated. The Danish courts have all kinds of objections to his visitation rights with the children, and he has to fill out forms all the time. He helps Andreas all the time, cleaning, talking, sewing, which he masters like no other. Andreas wants to help him too and says yes when Said asks him if he can help him with Danish paperwork. Andreas knows how it feels not to understand Danish. This is about Jonas and Dorte, who have now separated, as Andreas has heard. Jonas is a researcher at the university. Andreas could not find out Dorte's profession. They run a club together, the Language Coffee, for refugees and other immigrants, offering native knowledge, language courses, friendship, and other services. They are the friendliest people in Tornby and always excited when Andreas tries something, even if it is just a table set up with some free coffee. This is about Line, the director of the local language school. She is the most longing woman of Tornby. She would love to see something happen here. 
She jumps on every initiative of Andreas, makes her rooms available even if they are not available when Andreas would need them. She writes friendly letters of support. It would be so lovely life if it was so uh, it would be so lovely life if it wasn't so boring. Until it becomes nicer, you pull yourself together, work and remain friendly. Here we are talking about the public space in Tornby. You can walk around in Tornby and it is also, it's also possible to meet people there. There are few private businesses that generate a public space. The Bodega in Tornby Tor, the Iraqi hairdresser where you can also pick up phrases about politics, Tornby Potwares, a Facebook group, Tornby Neighborware, another Facebook group. Here we should talk about the mini club Children spend their free time here while their parents work in the afternoon. It is run by Lars, who everyone can talk to. Here we talk about Tornby Theatre, a professionalized amateur company that has existed for several generations, making the most successful cultural production in Tornby. The musical Grease was sold out in 30 minutes, and the Christmas fairy tale Peter Pan could only be killed by COVID. Andreas wandered through Tornby and found a locked former bank, Bank Nordic. Nordic is always good. And that's how Andreas met Christian. Christian owns an office in the city center and buys real estate in Berlin and Copenhagen. This time, exceptionally, Tornby. A former bank, great buying, apartments in, selling. After six months of waiting, Christian says yes to Andreas. Go for it. Andreas organizes three performance nights, makes an open call. The language coffee comes, art students, neighbors, the perfect mix. There are dance performances, video, techno, telepathy, kitchen, 80 people. Here we talk about Costa. The Kenyan was married to a Danish woman. They have three girls. Costa sees the girls only every other weekend. One girl has a terminal in illness. He works as a nurse, and he would be talented to play a public role in Tornby. He is eloquent, rhetoric rhetorically gifted, and a good performer. Instead, he works like a madman, nights through having to come lucid days with spirits of wine, or killing his open time with excessive television consumption, which he brings to the f which he brings to the flat screen two meters wide. Costa once blasts a local performance by Andreas as part of self-made capital, the performance nights in the bank. The performance of Andreas is called How to Welcome People, a short sketch of ideas about the many people Andreas has met in his local works. As soon as Andreas starts, Costa, who is sitting in the audience, takes the floor. Uh, let me say something. Andreas is here today because his life was, was much simpler than mine. When I was 10 years old, my father, he killed himself in front of me because he had 13 children that he could not take care of. And he took the poison for killing himself. And he drank it. We went to school in the morning. He drank the poison and he killed himself. When I was 10 years old, after that, I was left with my siblings, who are my life, to take care of them to go to school, make meal every day. I married a Danish woman who did not understand what it was all about. But today, I'm in Denmark with three children. But at the end of the day, I'm here with my good friend Andreas, who I met on the streets, where he made his Tornby version of the movie E.T. It was a good film. He visited me. He said, I have never seen a bachelor with a more clean house than you. Costa watches the audience. But at the end of the day, I look into your eyes. I see you. You sit, cl you sit close to her. Why? Hmm, she's a friend. Why? Hmm, random circumstance. Uh-huh. And you sit alone. 
You don't want to get close to anybody. Hmm. At the end of the day, I'm the man who has been in Denmark for 18 years. I have been heat beaten by some people who, who said I should go back, to your, go back to your place where you belong. You over here, you have the chance to make a difference, to say this is the Denmark that we want. What are you, uh, what are you gonna do about it? Really, what are you going, gonna do about it? Because me, I'm giving up. I have decided the day after tomorrow, I'm gonna take a plane. I tried, but I can't. I'm going to miss my children, but what are you going to do about it? Are you going to make a change? Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Say yes. Yes. Oh, this is not a yes. Come on. Yes. Yes. Today, Andreas is going to make a video of you saying yes. At the end of the day, think about it. You and you and you and especially you. So, that's a starter. 